The Unshackled Waves, episode 117. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. One of the most successful alt media channels in Australia last year was Vera Media, which gained a large following on Facebook and YouTube. It was particularly active during the same-sex marriage postal survey, where it discussed some of the potential consequences of same-sex marriage. The channel also explores other concerning and degenerate trends in Western society. The channel was founded by Charlie, who is based in Sydney. He is not just a reactionary, as anyone who has watched a lot of his videos knows that he has a whole range of views on complex uh, political issues. His brother, Jerram, was the Australian Conservatives candidate in the recent uh, Benelong by-election, so he comes from a family with strong conservative values. We thought we'd invite Charlie on the show today to talk about the growth of his channel, discuss some of the issues raised in his videos, and his involvement with his brother's campaign. Charlie, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Now, this is your first type of uh, discussion uh, interview, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. It's, uh, I've been I've been wanting to try these and 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 come on uh, to a show like this, but it, it's good. It's good. I'm excited. Yep, so hopefully uh, the viewers can get to know you a bit a bit better because um, they're so used to the fast-paced uh, videos that you produce. Yeah, that's right. I know it's it's always it's they're well scripted, and then I try to get my points across as, as effectively and quickly as possible. But I've got a lot more to say, so hopefully you know sh- uh, videos like this and, and and discussions like this will, will bring that out. Now, from your videos, it's uh, easy to tell you have strong political uh, convictions, and you've had those for quite a while. But I'd like to know what was the the catalyst where you thought, you know, um, rather rather than just you know keep these you know views to myself and you know I uh, campaign in a different capacity. What made you decide, you know, I really need to get them out there on the internet? Yeah, sure. Well, it was. Um... It's been a long time coming. I've, I've, I've always been interested in politics and history uh, and, and, and geopolitical affairs, but it was a mixture of fear and inspiration. So there was the fear of getting older and seeing what was happening in Australia, in, throughout the Western world, and where that could possibly lead, but also the inspiration of, of some people online overseas, you know, non-mainstream people uh, who kind of hit the, hit the airwaves through through YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram even, and, and I thought, you know what, these these guys and girls are doing a great job. Um, why can't I? So there was a mixture of it was a mixture of factors, but it, they, it was that inspiration and also that drive to to make change happen myself, if I could. That really pushed me out there and, and, and decide and helped me decide to give it a shot. Yeah, I certainly understand uh, where where you're coming from. There, well, it was sort of the same for me. I've you know consumed all these you know uh, YouTubers, and you know I really liked what they did. And uh, I, I thought to myself, yeah, why can't I have a go at that as well? Exactly, that's right. Now uh, you cover a, a wide range of, of topics in your in your videos. You've you've discussed you know social issues, also uh, climate change, and uh, even uh, some economics. Uh, how do you uh, plan a uh, a video? What what goes into you know producing it? Mm. Well, I, I like to uh, go with topics that I, I I enjoy talking about. That's that's usually the first point of call. So something that I find interesting, something that I find engaging. And something that I find relevant, uh, I try to tie it into, uh, you know, current affairs. So it, it can sometimes be a video is produced within a day based on something that's happened that I want to I want to talk about, or it can be it can take time um, to get there, but it's based on an issue that might be you know simmering in the media, out in the mainstream, and and people are discussing you know through over a, over a, over a certain period of time. So, but first and foremost, it's based on what I find interesting and what I feel I can contribute to in a positive way if i don't feel i know enough or i can't say anything i I won't go on and i won't go on and comment about it because i'll feel i'll be just you know i'll doing the topic and injustice and and possibly undermining the integrity of of what i'm what i'm trying to achieve 
even though like most uh, YouTube videos, they only go for about uh, five minutes, there is quite a lot of uh, research and preparation that goes involved because once you've published a, a video and if it includes an error, there's, there's no way you can take it back. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, definitely. And that's always the, the risk I run. Uh, and if there is ever, if I do come across something that I believe is wrong, I, I will try and rectify that in a post or, or something. Thankfully, I haven't had to do that yet. Um, but yeah, there is a lot of research and, but I enjoy, I enjoy reading. I enjoy, you know, going through YouTube and finding interesting videos and, and discussions like this, um, from, from guys and girls all over, all overseas. So yeah, yeah, there is a lot of research and, and back work that goes into it and it can be a little bit tedious and frustrating sometimes, but the end result is always worth it. And when you get to engage with your followers and speak to them and, and see their reaction, um, that, that's what makes it all worth it. So it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. Now, I wasn't able to tell by uh, watching your videos, but are you able to uh, perform your uh, monologues in one take? Uh, initially, no, but as of the last few, I have been able to. So I am slowly getting better. I was never comfortable with drama or, or acting or, or public speaking in that sense, but it's really helped me improve. And, uh, and I feel I'm getting better as time goes on. So initially, it would, it would take you know two or three or four even if it was a, a difficult or a longer, longer kind of video, but now I'm beginning to get to the point where I can go in one take, and I'm becoming more comfortable with that, which is, which is, which is much easier, and it, it's a, it makes it a lot more enjoyable as well. Now, I've uh, been curious, what does uh, Vera Media actually stand for? Yeah, so there's, um, it's it's a Latin word, and uh, it, it can be interpreted as the truth, uh, though I don't really want to go down that path as such. It's, I, I found an interesting um, interpretation. It's like the tip of the spear, you know, like the pointing, you, like you're searching, and it's that point of the spear that penetrates into that, that you know, that whatever it is uh, it's going towards. So I, in my own way, interpret it as, you know, the tip of the spear in the search of the truth, that kind of thing, and particularly in, 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 the, in, the, in the sense of um, politics and, and media and, um, you know, philosophy and all those different types of areas. So I want it to be... I want it to be. Uh, I wanted it to be a, a platform that does, isn't just narrow to one issue or one field. That it, that it can talk about anything and cover a wide variety of topics that I find interesting and I feel, you know, the public generally would find interesting as well. So that's that's kind of the, the general general gist of it. Now, as I stated in my introduction, your channel has been very successful on both uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, some of your videos have got tens of thousands of, of views. Why do you believe that you've been so successful in just a, a short space of time? Mm. I think it's because I've been brave enough to say what millions of Australians uh, have been thinking and have felt. That's really the, the vibe I've gotten back from many people that felt unrepresented, unspoken for, particularly in the mainstream. And the fact that I, you know, came out and, and, you know, presented my arguments logically and factually and as best as my ability as I could, I think a lot of people really appreciated that and, uh, and, and they gravitated to that message. So that, that was, uh, that's been the, the main purpose because Australia is still, you know, strongly conservative in many aspects and, and libertarian even, you could say, and that's largely being drawn out of the mainstream and, 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 and the kind of um, the forum of discussion. And and but the, but people still wanted to be there, and that's why I felt I was you know quite um, successful, thankfully, in getting out there so quickly. Now you've built uh, quite a large uh, following. Now, do you feel that you're building uh, towards something? Where would you like to take uh, Vera Media in the future? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And and initially, I gave myself you know a small amount of time because it is it is a lot of effort. Uh, you, you don't make any money from it, and um, and it's kind of a, it's a labor of love. So I thought I'll, I'll give myself, I broke it into three phases. So thankfully phase one has, has come through quite well. And I do hope to build it to be a platform to, to give that alternate voice into, into the, into the, into the, um, I guess the, the forum and, and bring people uh, together to discuss things that they couldn't usually discuss or, you know, uh, listen to or watch elsewhere. Uh, I do hope to build it into a more professional a uh, platform that can, you know, be, be more powerful and, and encompass, um, you know, greater greater capacity and greater technologies and things like that. So now I do have the vision to expand it to, to the next level. Um, but initially it was just, you know, seeing if I could 
make it work and seeing if people would respond to that message. So, but there are plans to expand further into the future, yes. Yeah, well, we're certainly uh, looking forward to that. Now, I wanted to uh, discuss uh, some of the uh, topics that you uh, uh, talk about in your in your videos. Now, uh, you see yourself as part of the uh, conservative resurgence, which is not just uh, uh, in Australia, but all throughout the, the Western world. Can you uh, define what, uh, what that means to you? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, I say... I... I would say it is definitely a resurgence, but I would say it's a resurgence not in the sense that they had gone anywhere, but in the sense that they are coming forward now more um, forcefully than they have in the past. I feel like conservatives in general have really sat on the fence um, and, and let society just drift along, whereas now they feel threatened for the first time in a long time and they're, and they're, coming, and they're coming forward. And you can see this from England or Canada through to North um, USA, down to down into Australia as well, and um, and I've had contact with many people from around the world who you know who support me and say you know you're doing what what many people in our countries are trying to do and 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 bring forward that voice and this conservative voice isn't limited to you know straight white men um, as as is so as so commonly uh, put forward. I mean you know like I pointed out in my recent video, Western Sydney was you know the the, the strongest no vote to the same sex marriage survey. And that's probably the most ethnically diverse and religiously diverse, um, you know, part of Australia. You know, I myself am the grandson of Middle Eastern migrants, and 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 so there is this new breed of conservative coming through, um, and and then yeah, and tying in with the you know the traditional conservative base that really want to have their voice heard and not be swept aside in this growing wave of um, you know relativism and you know as some people would term cultural Marxism. And, and the destruction of traditional classical Western civilization. And one of the topics you've talked about quite a bit is uh, what you define as the the gender agenda, which, uh, in my opinion, it's basically you know anti you know biology because the reason you mm -hmm. know, men and women behave you know differently is because they're. Their, their brains are wired differently, but we're seeing it. And uh, I'm, you know, from uh, Victoria, where it's it's the home of not just safe schools, but also the Respectful Relationships Program, where it really, you know, attacks, you know, uh, you know, ma uh, masculinity, and that there's, you know, something inherently wrong with, uh, with with being male. And it's also for some reason mixed in with mm -hmm. all these other types of, you know, degenerate ideas. These, you know, radical, um, you know. Uh, sex programs and uh, it's uh, I, it's hard to believe that it's you know crept in under you know uh, we like to hope you know watchful parents eyes yeah no definitely and this is something that's you know greatly worrying to myself and I know to many other people as well because this agenda strikes at the heart of what many people uh, what what certain groups and and elements of our society are trying to achieve and in one of my videos I kind of pointed out that I believe the, the gender push is in, more important to certain aspects of the radical left than same-sex marriage because if you can redefine an idea so basic and simple as gender, what else can you go on to redefine? You know, it kind of sets that benchmark. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's clear that sex and gender aren't separate. I mean, biology, as you said, biology says that science, science proves that. Um, and then just basic um, observation also sh shows this. But... If you can make that break and then suddenly transform gender into a construct, that that logic can be applied to so many other things. And like you said, it 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 it, it's, it goes it, it's it's coming into the schools and it's and it's worrying for many parents and families because a lot of children I know I'm sure you were the same growing up and I never really thought of a distinction between uh, other than male and female. And to bring that kind of thought process into a young child's mind goes beyond the idea of okay, well yes, there is more than two genders, it starts to attack all other fundamentals in, in, in one's life. Uh, and, for, you know, there was a, um, a, a, a lady on a transgender woman who, on, on the campaign trail with my brother who was actually working with the conservatives and she's very much against this gender agenda, as I'd like to put it, because she believes that they're using a genuine mental illness with true transsexuals, as she would term them, and transforming that into a political and social movement for wider and darker gain. So it's, it's a very wide and interesting debate and it is scary and it, and it can be very, and I've seen it firsthand, and it can be damaging to, to, to individuals and, and young people, particularly who are going through difficult phases in their lives. And it's just part of this wider push 
that's affecting many aspects of our society. Now, as you mentioned, you're the, the grandchild of uh, Middle Eastern migrants, but you yourself have uh, concerns about the, the current uh, migration uh, patterns mm. to uh, Western nations. Uh, how do you yeah. believe that, um, how should this issue be addressed? Well, I, very simply, I, I think that Australia should be seen as a, like a home. You don't just welcome anyone into your home. You want to welcome everyone into your home, but it, it, practically it doesn't work like that. And I believe that, you know, I believe all people are equal and all people are equal in dignity, but not all cultures are equal. And as such, we have to be smart in who we let in and who we say, look, you know, your entry to this country might not be beneficial for you or for us as a people. And that's not, I don't believe that's discriminating. I believe that's common sense. Um, so, you know, I'm all for migration because, in the, you know, my, my family's a product of smart migration, but not this open the floodgate style immigration that we're seeing in Europe that's bringing in, you know, large numbers of people that will take generations to integrate. And in the meantime, you know, will rely on government assistance um, and form, you know, little enclaves and ghettos and, be, and, feel, and fuel a, a sense of detachment from a society and resentment towards a society that does want to, does want to welcome them in, but essentially can't because of the, the, the way it's been done. You know, it, it's just not practical. It's not feasible. And, um, and you know, if you take the the issue of the, 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 the people coming through on the boats. Um, you know, people say, oh, just let them in, just let them in. But what about the millions of refugees who are legitimately waiting in refugee camps around the world who are, you know, wanting to come in and are being screened properly and being welcomed in and properly integrated? They're being pushed to the back of the line. So, you know, once again, I believe the plight of genuine refugees and the plight of people wanting to come to this country is being used for political and social gains by, you know, various political parties especially. So... Yeah, look, immigration is a great thing and it's built this country, it's built America and, you know, many other in Canada, but it has to be done properly and it can't be done in a way that it is a detriment to everyone involved. You've also commented on, obviously, the one of the biggest attacks the left launched this year is that of uh, Australia Day, but it's pretty much any type mm. of, uh, you know, tradition uh, in our nation. You talked about the uh, the war on Christmas as well, and uh, you can even throw Easter uh, in in that because, um, you know, mm. we, we even saw last Easter that, you know, not even that is uh, sacrosanct now. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. And then it's, 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 it's this wider cultural push. If you look, every certain aspects um, of our society, you know, on a wide range of issues are being, you know, just they're, they're testing the waters, so to speak. So with Australia Day, I've got a, I'm working on a script at the moment. And one of the things I say is that I can understand the Indigenous problem. There's certain divisions, there's certain aspects of the Indigenous community who have an issue with Australia Day. But if that discussion was to be had in a more uh, not so, you know, politically tight climate and I would say it'd be it'd be a better time to have that and you know from my end as a grandson of migrants if Australian history hadn't played out the way it had then my family wouldn't have come here and we would be enjoying we wouldn't be enjoying the blessed life we have today and when I and, and I mentioned this in my video when I talk to my grandparents they don't know much about colonial history but they know about a country that welcomed them with open arms that gave them a safe and prosperous base to build their lives on uh, and that's not saying that we shouldn't recognize that the terrible things that happened to the indigenous people during that settlement phase and the, and the negative uh, aspects of that. But history is history. And I think all nations have, you know, uh, black spots on their record, but we can't use that to divide the country going forward. And that's essentially what's, what's being tried with that. And the same with Christmas. Um, I know so many people who aren't religious who celebrate Christmas in their own way. Um, and same with Easter. And that, that, that division, once again, so in the name of equality, um, you know, they, and, and, and the minority, they exclude the majority. So I just, I just feel like there are all these slow, subversive attempts to undermine and just agitate a society. And as we know, communism and, and radical left-wing ideology has thrived on social division. That's, that's, what's, that's how it's always used. It's what it's always used to achieve its goals. So as long as we keep giving in to these demands, all we're going to get is social division and not unity, and that's been shown, um, you know, far and wide. So, 
And uh, a lot of uh, people who enter this uh, alt media field, and uh, some are described as you know anti-social justice warrior, they tend to uh, steer clear of uh, economics and thing, uh, things to do with you know size of government. But uh, you also have mm. you know strong convictions on, on on those issues, which you you haven't been afraid to address in your videos as well. Yeah, no, definitely. And um, so when it comes to the, when it comes to uh, like, so I have a finance economics background, so I wouldn't say I'm a master at it, but I understand the basic uh, fundamentals of economics, and I believe that. And I think it's something I'll go into further into in the in the future. Um, the elephant in the room is uh, sovereign debt, so national debt. Uh, globally, national debt is like ballooning out of control and overtaking, um, you know, the, the the actual GDP. So what the the amount of goods and services and and, and I guess financial um, surpluses a country will produce in a year, and you can't run a business if you're all if you're perpetually in debt. So that's an issue that I believe is going to be the ultimate determining factor of the future. It will bring out all the social issues from under it because without the you know without money flowing and without the economy running, everything else is secondary. Uh, and in terms of government, yes, I, I I I believe I don't believe in no government. I know there's a lot of people who argue for zero government. I believe I don't believe in big government, but I don't believe in no government. I believe that government can serve a purpose if it's uh, if it's run properly by the right people with the right intentions. So uh, yeah, I do have various views on those. Some a lot of people would agree with, some people might not agree with. But particularly economics, I'm going to focus more on that in the future and, and bring awareness to the economic dangers that Australia and the Western world face, and and what we can do possibly to to circumnavigate that if we can. <laughs> Now, one of the issues that your channel focused on significantly uh, last year, and which uh, probably uh, helped uh, gain uh, gain your channel uh, popularity, is uh, that of the uh, same-sex marriage uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. Now, you were quite uh, quite strong in advocating uh, for a a no vote. Now, even though I you know agreed with a lot of the the concerns you know that you. Uh, raised in your videos, uh, I always still believe that it was going to be uh, a yes uh, result, and I and I thought that um, uh, that the the best you know strategy to to focus on was you know if it if it does happen you know how can we you know make sure that you know what's happened overseas you know doesn't doesn't come to Australia. Mm. I, I I sort of believe that. Conservatives they they hinge too much on the result that if if this um, you know postal survey was lost then you know basically the the left had one which was I think you know was you know uh, setting 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 the conservatives up for you know like a huge uh, demoralization. Um, mm. I'm not sure how 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 you see you know because uh, it was a a strong yes result in the end. Uh, how did you interpret it? Yes. No. I, I, I. There's many ways you could look at it. I think the, the conservative conservatives felt it was like a realization for many people for the first time in Australia. I've never seen Australia rally around a single issue like this. You know, in my life anyway. And I think for a lot of conservatives, they realize, wow, this is this is kind of the the, the new world. Like, you know, entering the brave new world. If this goes through, Australia forever shifts its logic from you know what it was in traditionally and what it was traditionally based on to a new one. And I think um, you're right. A lot of a lot of conservatives did put everything behind this, and 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 they probably do feel demoralised after the event. But in saying that, though, I felt it did galvanise the conservative voice in Australia in in a weird way. I mean, you know, my, that's uh, the timing of when I released my 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 work was quite good, and it was kind of uh, fueled by that push, and I felt it firsthand. So. While it was demoralizing in one sense, at the same time, it did bring a lot of conservative voices together and for the first time, you know, to fight around a particular issue. I mean, there's always been conservative pockets fighting for small issues in society, but not like um, on this scale. So I think, um, yeah, and uh, so it was disappointing to to lose the result. I feel it was I feel it's a negative move forward. And we've seen that already in, in what's happened in Parliament for Australia and particularly people with their personal and religious freedoms. But overall, it was good in the sense that it 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 it, it, it just kind of reignited, and as you said before, that that conservative resurgence, and particularly in Australia, which has always been pretty apathetic about <laughs> a number of issues and, and what's going on around the world. So it was good and bad at the same time. But we accept the result. That's that's part of our society, and 
and we just have to now fight the, the battles in front of us. Did you feel that the no cam campaign strategy was right? Because because it, it felt to me that well the the advertising that was put out by the the no campaign had already conceded that um, there was no problem with same sex marriage itself because it talked about mm -hmm. you know uh, obviously safe schools and uh, you know loss of personal freedom which is not actually related to you know the mm -hmm. uh, issue of same sex marriage itself. I noticed in you talked about uh, that in in your videos, uh, you eventually did address, which which I, I was surprised that the No Campaign didn't address was you know, the mm. the effect on, you know, the, the family, that, you know, a child losing mm. their, you know, mother and father, you know, birthright. I thought that that should have been a, you know, greater focus mm. because that, you know, was directly related to, you know, because, uh, you know, you're not just redefining marriage, you're redefining family. I thought that that would have been a more effective, um, you know, strategy. Mm. Yeah. No, look, I know a lot of the, I met a lot of, I never knew, um, people thought I was, I was involved with the no campaign initially. And I, I wasn't, I just went out on my own and I, but I did come in contact with a lot of the people running the campaign and they were great people, very passionate. Um, uh, but the sense I got was that the, the debate was so pigeonholed that we, you couldn't actually talk about what marriage was anymore. It was just assumed that this was the, the way to go. So as a result, they had to come up with this whole kind of a negative style campaign and that and that involved a lot of the a lot of the things you were talking about just you know pointing out the dangers not actually talking about the issues and i think that was the big flaw in the whole debate because we didn't talk about what marriage was what the purpose was where, where it came from you know and, and how it served society well instead we had to talk about the dangers and that was as a, that was a result of the climate and and the kind of intense pressure coming from everyone you know, in the mainstream celebrities and social influencers, just pushing the same type of message, which was, you know, which was a bit worrying. And, and I also agree with you, though, on the issue of the family. That should have been a big issue because when I came across, initially I hadn't thought of that. I read a few things and I thought about it for a while and I thought, oh, that's actually a good point. I, I listened to Katie Faust, who was from America, who, was, um, who had, you know, lesbian mothers. And that, that, that really struck home. And I hadn't thought about that. But I'm not sure why that wasn't wasn't pushed because it was a very powerful point and and an element of the debate that not many people had thought about. You know, they thought about the marriage of the two people, but they hadn't thought about, you know, if they want children, well, where, well, where did the children come from? How does that work? So, no, you're right on that point, and I wish it was discussed more. Uh, because uh, as as with any issue, as soon as you concede that you know the left, you know, has you know or, or one. Uh, uh, one part of the argument or, you know, is right on, you know, part of the, the argument, then you're immediately, you know, f uh, from a position of weakness because the left are going to you mm. know, basically pounce on that and, you know, push even even further against you. Definitely. And definitely. And I think, and that was the thing, I feel like the campaign was too slow in coming. It should have been a continuous campaign ever, uh, since, since the discussion of, or since the debate began. And, and uh, yeah, the left did have that kind of that, that, that social credit and that, um, and that kind of that momentum behind them to claim, yes, we have the upper ground and the advantage in this clash. And, uh, but I think the result, even though it wasn't what we wanted, I think that a number of people changed their minds in the lead up and during the survey, just based on the discussions that were being had and the information and, and the topics that were being brought out by, you know, channels like mine and certain things that were going on uh, and a lot of people did change their mind and um and i think that was a positive and if it was conducted i personally believe if the campaign was conducted a bit better a bit you know started earlier uh there could could have been a different result and um because you've got to remember in the first week of the survey 50 percent of the, the the surveys came back and and as the weeks went on and people started to see the behavior of the yes camp which i which, which i witnessed firsthand it was very disturbing uh a lot of people did change their mind and voted or regretted voting yes based on what they saw so but that's 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 that, that's history that's a, that's a, that's the way it is now so it's all and, you say yeah <laughs> and you know we do live in a, a country now that does have you know same-sex marriage but you know i'm confident we can avoid some of the 
you know, negative consequences that we've seen overseas. I, I believe that, you know, the, uh, you know, desire to protect religious freedom is much stronger in Australia. Like, for example, uh, in most states and territories, there's always been exemptions to uh, anti-discrimination laws, you know, for uh, religious uh, institutions. So, so there's always been, uh, mm. you know, that, you know, re a religion has, you know, a, a, spe a special, you know, place in our in our society now uh, now obviously you know the the left there they're always trying to um you know grind that down but it was interesting like for example the um uh, the other day even uh, labor's education spokesman tanya plibersek said that you know labor still supports you know religious schools you know hiring you know people who um a adhere to their faith's teachings mm. oh look i for me, that, that sounds more like political grandstanding because what they say and what they do are very different. I still remember after the survey, uh, Bill Shorten came out and, and, and he was trying to suddenly change his tone and woo the 39%. And because you've got to remember, much of the no vote came from str Labor strongholds. So if you go to Western Sydney and you go to the, the, the electorates that voted no, they are mostly Labor, not Liberal. And um, and so that they have to say those things. And and I just hope that they follow through. What was disturbing for me personally was what the bill that passed through the Senate and then the upper house didn't really look to include much of the, 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 the debate of religious and personal freedoms. It was almost like a kick in the teeth and saying, look, you know, we, we, we won, um, you know, we have the power now uh, and that's it. Just stay away. So uh, you've got this review coming up with Philip Ruddick um, looking into it, but how much can a review do if it's not enacted into law? It's just going to be, you know, a piece of paper on a shelf. So, I, I hope, I, I hope, I want to be as optimistic as yourself, and I, I do agree that Australia does hold religion in a special place. But it's in in this case, it's the people in power that decide, and I just feel like the people in power now don't really care. Malcolm Turnbull doesn't show much much interest, even though he said he did. You know, I wouldn't really trust Bill Shorten just <laughs> based on much of what he says. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. It'll be, it'll be a very interesting time. It might further split society again, just based on this desire to enforce a certain, a certain um, ideology and a certain view. Now, one video that I did uh, disagree with you quite a bit on was the the one you posted about the the murals that were. Uh, p uh, mm. uh, painted on in in sydney there was actually two murals there was a uh, one yes. of um you know tony abbott in his budgie smugglers and george pell with his uh with his hands down tony abbott speedos which in my opinion that one was a bit off but there, mm -hmm. there was also the uh, the other one which was uh george michael you know as a jesus type figure and you know mm. that uh, that one in my opinion well it was meant to be you know a tribute to george michael i don't think it was meant to uh you know be you know an attack on on christianity mm. and i felt that you know your um you know support for the the people who pa uh, painted over it i i i felt that your video was an overreaction to it because i feel that you know that um and this was another um, uh, shortcoming of the No campaign is that they tried to be, you know, vi uh, victims themselves, you know, saying, you know, we're being, you know, bu uh, bullied and that. And, you know, you obviously, you know, agree with that to a degree. But I think it's very careful that the the right don't become snowflakes and, you know, uh, are seen to be, you know, just as offended as, as we're seeing the social justice warriors. Mm. Yeah, no, I can see why people would, 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 would have thought that. But through the campaign, there was this constant one-sided uh, mentality towards, you know, the no, the no side. So, you know, I'm sure you saw the, the video at Sydney Uni and, um, and I was receiving, you know, weekly videos of people just from their, from their um, phones filming the abuse that they were copying. You know, you had the politicians. You know, there was just this constant one-sided push in this whole debate. And if we did, if we set one foot wrong, it would have gone, you know, all over the world and bigots and homophobes and right wing fascists. And yet those on the yes side were just given this leeway to do pretty much whatever they wanted, you know, not short of physical assault. And there was really no, it was like accepted. Oh, it's okay. So they've been discriminated. They've been this, they've been that. So the timing of the first, uh, so I know the George Michael mural was up, uh, you know, I think since January last year, but the the timing of the second mural 
was very, very poor and 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 aimed to provoke. And and you can't say otherwise. That's you know, if, if it was in the reverse, you know, or everyone would have been up in arms and, and the same thing would have happened. But the issue with it is, is that non people who aren't practicing, um, uh, you know, say, say, non-religious as such, won't understand um, the the insult of those two images, particularly the George Michael one. See, people think it's just a tribute to George Michael, but I could show you um, Christian iconography um, in which the artist has purposely taken images of Christ and put George Michael in that image. And so to Christians, they believe that, you know, Jesus is God. And that's obviously highly, highly offensive. So just to give you a brief background, the the, the image of George Michael with his hand like that, that wasn't, that's not an accident. That's teacher. Um, the halo represents holiness. Um, the, he had in one hand, so he, and he had a, he had weed in one hand and then he was holding I think it was um, a bong. I'm not sure what he was holding, but that usually signifies the hands on the sacred heart of Jesus. Um, and then the stole around his neck with the rainbow colors, that stole is a, uh, it's a sign of the priestly order to so someone who's ordained. So what it was, was this, the whole image. Um, so to the naked eye, it just looks like a kind of, you know, religious knockoff, kind of cool of George, Mi- George Michael tribute. But the whole image itself was essentially a, um, a shot at, at Jesus and, and his religion and the icons that depict that. So I can, and, and so when I looked at the situation, I thought I wouldn't have gone about it, maybe going over and painting over it in public. I would have maybe started uh, a, a debate about it and asked to have it removed legally, not, not the way it was. Um, but I just feel like that, that discussion wouldn't have gone anywhere and that, um, and that I could understand the, the, the frustration of, Many of the no vote people, and also particularly particularly when it was gone to that level of an insult, and and so I, I kind of understood and, and related to um, the, the the people's frustration and how they lashed out. Not that I agree with the way they did in the sense it was just I I, I understood and I appreciate it, and it was, and it was good that a, a stand was taken. I think personally, because if a stand wasn't taken, then you know how far would it keep going? You know we can't. Like I said, there was one there was one set of rules for one party and another for another, and I think that was the result of that. And it was lucky it didn't go any further than that, to be honest. It was just you know a bit of you know a bit of argument, a bit of pain, and that was it. But um, yeah, so that's my thoughts on it. But I can understand why a lot of people would disagree. Because it is like, and obviously you know you've explained why you found it offensive, but it still is uh, you know free speech. The the murals were on you know uh, private pop property and um you know i I know that in your video you talked about you know imagine if you know it was you know done to Mm. insult you know another group you know i would still say you know that that was free speech Mm. yeah and and then and that's and that's the struggle of this debate and that's the that's the point i'm always kind of working around it's like okay well i can understand yes they have the right to do it but you know it's it is offensive and you know do the other people have the right to respond the way they do probably not but it's just this kind of back and forth, and I don't really have a clear uh, position on, you know, that 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 issue. Um, but I guess, you know, part part of my channel is that it is kind of my personal channel too, and a lot of my feeling will come through. And even if my feeling is sometimes not in line with, you know, perfect rash, um, rationale, it, it will be there. And then and then I just felt that that was step that was a step too far. I mean, you know, Newtown's full of different wall murals and. And, um, and and kind of, you know, depictions of certain things. And, and if there was ones that were celebrating the LGBT um, IQ lifestyle and, and all those things, um, no one would really care. But when it was a particular attack against, you know, against the group, that's when I think it bothered people. And, and like you said, if it was in the reverse, you know, the, the uproar would have been, you know, ama- like, you know, astounding. And it would have been, you know, totally, you know, totally accepted whatever came from that side if the situation was in reverse. So it's just also that hypocrisy as well. And I guess I was trying to bring light to that hypocrisy, even if I fueled it a little bit, um, because, you know, it is it is very one-sided even now, even though everything's kind of moved on. Now, your brother, uh, 
Jerome, he uh, ran as the Australian Conservatives candidate in the recent uh, Venelog uh, by-election, and uh, you uh, filmed a, a video with him uh, in support of uh, his uh, candidacy. Now, Australian Conservatives, it was only founded uh, last year at, say, uh, a new political movement. Uh, why, why do you does your family believe that you know it's you know is the the answer as opposed to the major parties yeah so uh i know i know i personally know a lot of the people involved in the australian conservative party and um i met a lot of the people involved through the party so i myself remain apolitical i'm not a member of the australian conservatives um and i and i think for the purpose of my channel i will remain apolitical because i've always found that you know political parties you know they have a bad habit of disappointing people. Um, but in saying that though, I did support my brother and I still support him. And I do like what the Australian Conservatives stand for because the people involved genuinely stand for conservative principles. They're not like the neocon type um, Liberal Party members we're seeing coming out uh, that are conservative in name only. You know, the volunteers, the, the state executives, and even Corey himself right to the top genuinely believe in the conservative cause and they and they stand for conservative principles and you know a lot of people challenge other oh, what are your principles and you know if you do go onto the website and have a have a have a read of it you know they're, they're quite good i think personally anyway so it kind of it's a it's a whole round it's it's a holistic approach and i feel that on every aspect they they are the most conservative platform politically within the australian sphere particularly as the liberal party move further and further uh, as i see it to the left and what was it like uh, on the the campaign trail for the Australian Conservatives? Because mm -hmm. it was their first, you know, campaign uh, ever. You know, a, a lot of their their infrastructure had been uh, untested. Uh, was mm -hmm. was there a good, you know, vibe amongst the the volunteers? How much, you know, campaigning was able to be done? Yeah. So in two and a, we only had pretty much two and a half weeks by the time everything clicked into gear. And I can tell you that the vibe on the ground was very like high energy and very excited. Um, compared to Liberal and Labor, like Liberal just looked like they had to be there. Labor really wanted it, but it was a desperate one. They were throwing, like, they were pulling in resources from everywhere, and I think they threw a million plus dollars at it. And so, outside of Labor and Liberal, we were there. You know, we matched them for numbers in most uh, most places, um, but we over, we we overtook them as I saw it anyway, in passion and and a desire to win. So obviously. The, like you said, the, the, the systems in place were very much untested and it did, there were a lot of like little clunky things along the way, which is, which is understandable, but the base were there, the core were there. And one of the interesting things I found was that our party was the most multicultural and the most diverse of all the parties that were there. So people, like I said earlier, people usually think of the conservatives as this kind of like, you know, straight white male dominated ideology and idea, whereas in reality, on particularly in you know from what I saw in that in that campaign, there was all cultures, all religions, you know, sexualities, and and it was um, it was really interesting, and and that shocked a lot of people. I know that, and I know it shocked the Greens as well because they always they they they, they claim they go on about diversity and all this kind of stuff, but their members were always elderly, you know, white men, and they used to look at us, and I think they'd get a bit confused because we were young, diverse, and and passionate about what we believe. So. Yeah, that, that's um, that, that was my interpretation from 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 what I saw on the ground, anyway. Now, even though there was that you know, passion in the campaign, uh, Australian Conservatives on election night they still only obtained uh, four percent of the the primary mm. vote, and most of that came from uh, the the Christian <coughs> Democrats, who always poll quite highly uh, in that state. Uh, there wasn't much of a dent in the, the Liberal Party's primary vote. In fact, most of the reduction of their primary vote went to uh, the, uh, the Labor Party. Um, so uh, was there a bit of, you know, disappointment, uh, you know, in the campaign? Because Benelong is quite a, um, you know, socially conservative seat. It, it voted no in the, in the uh, postal survey. Um, uh, what, what did you take from that result going forward? Or what did the party yeah. ta take from that result? Yeah, I think there was a there was a little bit of disappointment, and we'd obviously hoped for, for better. But you've got to keep in mind that it was only a two and a half week campaign, and the biggest issue we found on the campaign trail was that people didn't know know about the Australian Conservatives. So you had a new candidate, a new party, in a very intense short by election, 
And a lot of the thing, and people, and and one of the things that worked against um, worked against the Australian Conservatives was that people don't understand the preferencing system in the vote, and they they thought that if they put us first, it would hand the vote to Labor, which is not true. So what 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 I found happened was a lot of liberal, traditionally liberal voters were they liked it, and then they'd come up and they'd talk to us and they'd support us. But what would happen would they'd be say, look, I just I just don't want Labor to win, and we'd try and explain, try and explain, but. And, and I saw this when I, I was scrutineering in, in the booth that I captained. And even on the Labor ballots, I was watching them. And the Liberal, the, the Australian Conservative came, was second or third in, in many of, on the, of the ballots. So I felt like time was against us, inexperienced youth. Um, but, you know, there was this strong interest. And, and, and the Christian Democrats still did quite well considering. And I think that was because their candidate was a local to Benelong. He has a church, I'm pretty sure. And he was Asian, so he could, you know, connect with the Asian communities there. But um, overall, I think it was positive considering the circumstance. And it did send a message to the Liberal Party to say, you know, even in this short time, this is what they did. So, you know, it, it, it should be an interesting future you know, in, if, if, if everything, if they run their party properly. Now, there is a lot of debate in uh, conservative circles about what is the, the better strategy politically. Is it better to you know, join a new, you know, authentic conservative movement such as Australian Conservatives, or is it you know, better to you know, join you know, a major party like the Liberal Party and uh, you know, support the you know, good people in that and try and influence a major party? Mm. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and unfortunately, we had a lot of um a lot of negative um kind of what would I say, ne- negative contact with some traditional liberal voters as uh, throughout the campaign which was disappointing i personally feel like the liberal party has moved too far to the left i personally feel that the the upper echelons of the liberal party um rec- uh, recognize certain social trends and aren't willing to go against them and so while it, it would be admirable to stay and fight with the liberal party i just think that the odds you know, that will be a long drawn out effort. And by the time any victory is claimed by, you know, the conservative wing of the Liberal Party, it'll be too late. And and then it'll just force the formation of a new party anyway. That's my personal opinion. I know a lot of people strongly disagree with that. But if you look at someone like Tony Abbott now, he's been slowly outed from the Liberal Party and, and shafted more and more. Um, you know, you, you, you can't say that the conservative voice is, is, is being respected and well represented in the Liberal Party anymore. That, that's my personal opinion, but I just feel like you might as well cut now and start because by the time you end up doing that, which will happen, uh, it's, it's going to be too late. Well, Charlie, I've certainly enjoyed our uh, discussion today. I felt I've got to know you uh, a bit better, the, the man behind the, the videos, and I hope others have as well. So thank you. No, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, and I've, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed the chat. It's been, it's been great, actually. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. Now, we're going to be shaking things up here at the Unshackled Waves after the success of our In Focus show on the uh, Victoria's African Youth Gang Crime Wave. Uh, We're deciding to rest the review show format and instead have a single issue current events shows. So I hope you enjoy those. And a reminder, as always, to vote in the 2017 Unshackler Awards. There are 10 categories with uh, 10 nominees each. And the latest awards to be posted are the Unshackler of the Year Award and also the International Cuck of the Year Award. So make sure you get voting and, of course, the winners are announced on Australia Day. Thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.